Welcome to Global Vid, a podcast about original productions and international TV and film distribution. I'm your host, Eric Y. LaPointe, and we're about to learn how people in our industry are expanding their footprint and finding the right partners around the world. This show was created by And Now Global and is also available as an audio format on Apple, Spotify, or your favorite podcast application. Welcome to today's episode of Global Vid. We are excited to launch yet another series that will focus this time exclusively on Africa. As one of the world's last emerging television markets, this is an excellent opportunity to introduce the continent's audiovisual strengths abroad, while also providing a deep look on how African television executives and producers are creating quality African stories for its own audiences. So how are African producers exporting their content within their continent and also beyond? And how can other territories explore co-productions to support African-made content? So this is what we're going to talk about throughout this series. And today, we're starting off with our esteemed guest, Monde Twala, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Africa at Viacom CBS. Let's meet Monde right now. Welcome to the show, Monday. How are you? I'm good and you, my brother. All is well. Uh, We're navigating this uh, new amazing world with its uh, lovely challenges. Yeah, that's one way of saying it. (laughs) (laughs) All all perspective, all perspective. Yeah, before we get started, why don't you introduce yourself and what you do at Viacom uh, CBS in Africa? Um, Monde Twala, I'm... uh, I look after the Viacom CBS Africa business as uh, the MD uh, and senior vice president. Um, I also have uh, another portfolio, which is uh, the BT International portfolio as uh, as the lead uh, on BT International uh, channels and uh, multiple territories as we expand across across the world. Yeah, in terms of uh, Viacom Africa, we have uh, quite a few brands that are well recognized, uh, you know, we in the content game. So from MTV, MTV Base, which is our music channel, MTV, our normal reality, teen channel. Um, we have uh, BET, Comedy Central, and uh, Nick Tunes, Nick Jr. That are our local brands that live across the DSTV platform. And we have also got some free-to-air partnerships on the ground where we do blocks, where we do free-to-air blocks ensuring that, uh, you know, a lot of our content uh, reaches as many Africans as possible. So those blocks, are they considered distribution sales or, or, or actually branded block sales? That's something new that I haven't necessarily heard of. Yeah, it's, uh, these, are, these are branded blocks. So we've got uh, Nick branded blocks uh, and MTV base branded blocks uh, in some of the markets. You know, that's part. And then we've got our VIS business, which is Viacom International Studios uh, Africa business, which then focuses on third party productions uh, and, of course, our own productions that we do for, for our brands. But we also do third party productions for other parts. And then VIS Studios, are they also responsible for the distribution of that content across Africa as well? Correct. So, so VIS would then look at... Uh, uh, obviously, co-productions that we do with third parties or co-productions that we do for ourselves. And uh, VIS would also look after the, the distribution business of our content across the space. And we partner with everyone from Netflix, Amazon, uh, Showmax, MultiChoice, et cetera. So, so we have different pockets of business that we do uh, across the brand. In our truest nature, you know, Viacom, CBS, is uh, is a is an aggregator of great content and great formats and uh, and uh, we look to then uh, open up business and partner with as many platforms as we potentially can so before we start uh talking about you know th- those businesses in, in even more detail and also i think it's going to be a great episode to talk about intra-african trade and and also I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are going to want an update on you know what's changed in the last five years in Africa and and what's coming up in terms of trends. But before we do that, one of the part of the show that I love to do is to take a look at how you got started in the entertainment 
uh, industry in the first place. So can you tell the audience, like, how did you get started in TV? <laughs> I asked myself that question. And I say, why? <laughs> why? Why did I choose? Uh, what did I choose? Long nights, long days. No, I think, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, I think I was born a creative. I was born into a very creative space. You know, uh, a lot of my family is in the broadcast or media space. My grandfather was a, a publisher, you know, uh, one of the first African journalists, you know, editors uh, um, on the continent back in his days. So I do come from a family that's, that's a creative family, that's, uh, you know, a family of storytellers. And I think that's where my passion came from. I'm a Soweto boy. So I'm born and bred in Soweto, South Africa. Really fell in love with movies. From a young age, I was fascinated with just movies and film. And I then was fortunate to get involved uh, back in my days with the SCBC for about three and a half years. You know, started off in corporate communications uh, and evolved into sport. Worked for SCBC Sport and sports productions. And I just, I'm just fascinated about, you know, the idea of collaborating because um, that's our business. This is a business about collaborating. It's a, you yeah. know, the creative process is about putting different ideas and from different places and pulling it together. I guess that's where my passion was, you know, just put, being having that ability to pull things together. Went on, left the CBC to join uh, ETV, uh, which was the, you know, the first commercial independent broadcaster uh, in, in the South African context, um, spent 17 years at ETV, you know, uh, in numerous roles from creative to the corporate, uh, you know, to running the business eventually. I've been blessed with uh, having just amazing teams, amazing people. And I think just my ability to be able to deal, make and pull things together and do win-win deals. Uh, you know, to date, I've, I don't think I've done a deal. Uh, that's not a win-win. So, you know, that, that keeps me going. That's my passion. And of course, I fell in love with Africa. I fell in love with the rest of the continent as I was growing in the business. Uh, started uh, ETV in Ghana, expanded ETV in Ghana. Okay. You know, and then over time, Viacom knocked on the door and I joined Viacom CBS uh, about four and a half years ago. And, uh, you know, joined them to look after some of their brands and, and eventually now looking after the entire business across the continent and to be honest, across multiple territories, which has been an amazing, amazing growth spurt for me. You know, I bring a, le a learning attitude to everything, you know, so the idea of collaborating and learning from other people to then come up with new different models and kind of reshape the African landscape um, is something that I'm passionate about. And, and uh, once again, content is king. People follow great content. Where it sits is where it sits, but people follow great content. And the last time we spoke, it seemed like sports was one of the main drivers that brought you to this industry in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So did you want to be an athlete? Is that the first goal that you had as a teenager? Uh, unfortunately, I'm one of those, uh, you know, frustrated football, couch football coaches, you know, so uh, so soccer was my big passion. Uh, I played football all my life. Um, that was my dream. I was going to captain the national team. I was going to play for AC Milan. I was going to play for the biggest clubs in the world. And, uh, and I played football for a bit, uh, tried out professional football. But, you know, through football, I got, to, I got into this business also through football, you know, because of my passion for sport. And that's how I started at the SCBC, you know, doing sports programs and sports producing, uh, eventually moving on to multiple other genres. I mean, I've, I've produced across almost every genre from news. I've run news channels, you know, current affairs shows, dramas, documentaries, reality, um, sport, uh, live sport productions. Um, I've been blessed with, uh, with just a, an amazing journey of amazing people who've taught me along the way. And I owe it to them, to be honest. I, I owe my, my success and where I find myself today uh, to all those people, you know. Let's talk about that collaboration that you mentioned. That's the aspect of the job that you like the most. Now let's talk about African content on Viacom channels. You know, to what extent is uh, Viacom Africa investing in 
local productions. And how important is that uh, now, today, and also moving forward? Viacom CBS business on the continent is in a very healthy uh, space. Um, you know, we've got the perfect balance. You know, we are very much, a lot of our brands are youth brands. A lot of our brands are aspirational. I think it's very much close to the African viewer. You know, that's something that's very much that triggers the African viewer. African viewers, you know, they want access to, to, to the best global content the best shows. Hollywood is obviously, you know, the biggest influence in terms of television in this, in this market, uh, a lot of consumption of, of, of international content. But over the years, we've started seeing a shift from that to more localized content. So localized formats, uh, localized storytelling. So local storytelling has been a key, key element. Um, so whether it's a, a documentary, whether it's a drama series, you know, on this continent, telenovelas are huge, you know, so, so the idea of telenovelas and, and we've just recently invested in, in our first telenovela for BET, oh. which is called Isono, which has had great, 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 has been well received by the audiences across South Africa and the whole continent. And most recently, we've just launched Isono in France. Um, so BET France has also launched Isono and seen close to about 120% growth in that specific time slot. One of the things that we want to be able to achieve is to be that central platform for Af that connects Africans globally. And that's through our BT International portfolio, uh, which we've just launched BT in Brazil. We are in France, in, in Africa, and we are in the UK also through the My5 platform. Just launched BT in, in Brazil through our Pluto TV platform. And I think for that brand, specifically for our international portfolio, BT International portfolio, we want to be able to then localize some of our formats across the different regions where, where we have presence. So it sounds like your role with BET is, uh, goes well beyond Africa, if you're talking about all these other nations. Are you directly involved? Correct. Internationally? So basically... At Everywhere but the United States. Everywhere but the, the the United States. That portfolio would 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 sit with myself. There's also a very clear reason for this. You know, if you if you think about it, you know, Africa is the cradle. They make reference to Africa as the cradle of humankind, and many many Africans historically have of obviously and through slavery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't want to get into history, but there's Africans all over the world. There's third generation, fourth generation Africans. And they connect with the motherland, they connect with the continent, they connect with the rich culture, you know, black pride, black, black love, black history. Uh, every African globally wants to connect back with the motherland and wants to connect back with uh, uh, Africa. And, and that's one of the gaps we're seeing, growing that kind of portfolio and vision and pulling everyone together through the amazing storytelling that we, we tell. Um, you know, we've done biopics from an African perspective. We recently did a biopic. We've just launched a sitcom called Black Text that's going into season two and a whole bunch of reality formats that we plan to launch. In the UK, we're about to launch Project Create, which is a, a call to action to cr Black creatives in the UK through that work, we'll have quite a diverse portfolio of, or diverse library with uh, multiple genres, um, short and long form content that, that we'll tap into. And right now on the BET channels and Comedy Central uh, in Africa, what, what percentage of that content is dedicated to, I, I know there's a huge like output deal with the, uh, your American partners, but what, what percentage of the content that you program is African content. Currently, probably about, you know, we, we obviously the bulk of our, of our schedule uh, and programming is our pipeline content. And, uh, and, then, and then we'll have a percentage of it being local content. So on a quarterly basis, you know, from one brand to the next, we will then, we then launch local African projects for the local market, um, which is a great balance because then, we know that research tells us all the time that Africans want to connect. Africans also want to see themselves. They want to see their culture. They want to see their stories. They want to see people like them on TV telling their stories. 
And that's the beauty about that balance that I was talking about, about, you know, the idea of we can access the best international quality programming and bring it to the continent. And at the same time, we can then, you know, kind of reposition the African narrative and produce content that is local, that is authentic for the world, which, which means you are, you are now starting to kind of shape the narrative, uh, the African narrative, and, and, and you can impact and change perspective on the continent. And with all this new local content, how important is intra-Africa trade? And what countries might surprise us that are consuming content that comes from other nations within Africa? I'm seeing a major, major, major growth and boost um, in terms of uh, the inter-Africa trade. You seeing Nigerian producers working with South African producers. You seeing, um, I mean, just look at the growth of Afrobeats as a music genre. It's now, it now translates globally. You know, Burner Boy, WizKid, they're all winning Grammys now, you know? Um, um, so, so African talent is building and growing at an international base, which is what we wanna do. So it's, I think it's exciting times. You know, we're seeing, we're seeing more and more uh, productions coming out of different markets, you know, Kenya, Nigeria, um, very, very, very uh, progressive. Of, of course, South Africa, you know, almost every genre is, 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 it works pretty well. But if you look at Nollywood and how Nollywood's grown, you look at uh, some of the dramas, you look at, you know, even VOD platforms like Netflix um, and what, how much African content they're now starting to put on their channels. I, I think there's, there's, there's great. I mean, all these new platforms are doing more and more and more. From a Viacom CBS perspective, the last 15 years have been very key. When we launched here 15, 16 years ago, um, we were very clear that we would have to produce more local content that speaks and resonates to the market in order to build our brand. And that's been very rewarding for us. Do you think your, your competitors, Netflix, them coming into the marketplace, is that and actually producing local content, that, does that shift the paradigm? Like... Does that put more pressure on everybody else to like step up their game with local content? I mean, absolutely. For me, I don't see these new platforms as competitors. You know, I, I see them as complementary partners. So for example, you know, most of our channels sit on, on linear. We still run very much a linear business. We are in the pro process of transitioning into more streaming digital business. You know, I think it brings more opportunity you know, for diversity when you have competition in the market. I think it, it changes the game. It elevates culture. It elevates storytelling. I'm one who embraces this change and shift, um, um, you know, like I said earlier, you know, in these amazing, challenging times. But as challenging as it is, it's forced us to innovate and think differently how we can continue to, to build the content portfolio across the continent and bring more professionalism, more better production values. And, and I think that's, that's, that's the advantage we bring as, as, as a business, you know, as a Viacom CBS business, that's the advantage we bring. We bring expertise, best practice. That's why we are seeing more and more, you know, traction in terms of local content that we see out of the continent. And that's also the inspiration behind launching uh, officially a Viacom international students business on the continent uh, that can focus on servicing and impacting the local uh, production industry positively by bringing best practice, you know, bringing new models, you know, co-productions, pre-licensing uh, models, which, which were very difficult in the past. You know, the, this market is very much a um, commission, you know, broadcasters commission and own, whereas, whereas uh, I think that's not sustainable. That's archaic. So in South Africa, are there treaties for film and television with other African countries to, to do those co-productions? Exactly. So what are the main ones that are quite active? I, I mean, I, I think I met uh, uh, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, very, very, very active, very, very active uh, from a, from a co-production perspective. We've seen so many formats being launched uh, across the continent. And of course, I think even, you know, a, a pay TV platform like MultiChoice uh, that, that has such wide reach across the base has, has helped, you know, to, to inspire more 
local content, better production values. And I think we, we're in a dynamic, exciting space uh, as a continent right now. We also, you know, if you think about Africa, we're also quite attractive, you know, from a, you know, we've got the landscape that makes great TV, that makes great documentaries, great movies, you know. So if you look at Durban, Durban is an amazing landscape. You've got the ocean, you've got, you know, you, you could be in any island down in Durban. You could be in <laughs> Cape Town. Look at how, you know, the advertising production sector in Cape Town is thriving from international work alone, you know, uh, because international ads are being done down in Cape Town because the weather's permitting the, the crews, you know, we've got, you know, South Africa's got amazing crews, you know, but similarly, you go to Lagos today, a very, very energized production sector there, energized broadcasters, you know, from, from your STVs to, uh, to all these other kind of new platforms. Uh, you look at the Rocco platform coming up, you know, they started off slowly, they're now really making good headway. It's really like a dynamic space. You know, you look at, uh, you know, the citizens of, you know, Citizen TV in Kenya, you know, where they were a couple of years ago to where they are now, you know, uh, DTT is rolling out in, in Nigeria, in Kenya, across the, 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 the space, there's, uh, you know, new platforms that are, that are popping. And that's exciting. I, we can only embrace that because it just yeah. means more diverse voices and representation of the continent. This is a great colorful continent. And, and through the work we all do, this is how we're going to elevate the African story. And I'm super passionate about that. Thanks for sharing that passion. Now we don't have a, a lot of time left. And I just quickly before we end this podcast, I, I do want to talk about the fact that you're going to be launching two OTT channels sometime in 2022. And that includes the Paramount Plus platform that's now the staple of Viacom CBS, but also Pluto TV, which is which is owned by Viacom CBS. So you're involved in that. So how is that going to unfold in 2022? Audiences across the world moving are shifting. Television consumer trends are changing every day. Uh, audiences want content and they want their content on multiple platforms as they want it, when they want it, you know? So viewer, viewership patterns have really shifted in this kind of digital age. So I, I don't think Africa is any different. I think actually, you know, Africans are on trend most of the time and they follow, they follow the trend quite quickly. And, and we're already starting to see viewers migrating to, to, to digital platforms. And I think it's quite a timely piece. You know, we are, we are in the market right now looking at different models on how to evolve our business into a streaming business. Uh, we're talking to quite a few partners from telcos to, to pay TV to free to air partners uh, that are doing different things uh, uh, and driving new digital products uh, and making sure that our portfolio has a home. Uh, we've got a rich library. We've got rich brands and, 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 and diverse brands that serve an entire family, you know, from your kids all the way to your parents and adults. That's our big growth area that we see now in prioritizing streaming. And, and of course, you know, we will lean in. Like I said, that's the advantage we have is to bring best practice into the market and bring new models into the market. And mm. so Pluto and Paramount Plus definitely in sight, you know, as, uh, as we build going forward as franchises or properties that we plan to, to find a home for you know, with, with some of the partners that, uh, that we talk, that, that we are currently talking to. And then I'll, I'll give you a, a full picture as, as, as and when we get closer to, you know, to, to locking this off. And then if I can end with one last question, because I know you have to go from a viewer standpoint across the continent, how does the new SVODs that are already uh, in Africa and that are coming to Africa, how does this change the game for the audiences? I think it gives audiences diversity. It gives audience more. I think the idea is really about the certainty of being a strong brand, as in, as in being a trusted content provider is, is something that we have as Viacom CBS. Um, it's something that we pride ourselves and, and, and it's at the center of everything we do is create creativity and content. You know, deliver content that, that appeals and resonates with audiences, being, you know, that local approach. 
as we see, you know, we kicked it off early, like we said, you know, 16 years ago, we launched. We launched a great pipeline of content. We've had to supplement that with local content in order to, to penetrate the market and grow the portfolio. We're seeing more dividend in that, in, in that, in that strategy, and that's something that we're going to do. I'm seeing the same from all the new players that are coming in. I'm seeing them localizing. If, you, if you're in touch with your audiences, the science will tell you, localize to be able to resonate. I don't think we are, I don't think they are in any different place to where we were when we started. You know, we've laid that foundation, others are following, uh, and that's something we'll continue to do. We'll continue to, to explore different markets, we'll continue to, to partner, and, and we are open for business to collaborate with local production partners, international production partners. You know, we've had successful partnerships with uh, the local film incentives, with the DTI, um, et cetera, to unlock more value for local audiences, whether you're in Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda, um, Zambia, wherever you are on the continent, we want to make sure that we can, you know, you as, as our viewer can access our, our amazing uh, inventory of, uh, uh, of content. Well, it sounds like exciting times right now in Africa. And, uh, you know, it, the, the, the fact is, is like in the last, the first time I ever went to Africa, it, they said, you know, it's the last emerging market in the world. And, and you see that, but you see the fact that, you know, free television remains like free over the air television remains very important in many uh, countries and communities, but yet uh, the middle class is also growing and that gives access to, you know, cable services and obviously uh, online and mobile services. So that's going to really help further the growth, especially online. So it's, it's going to be interesting to keep watching in the next little while as uh, SVODs come, continue to come in. One thing that's been consistent over, over time and throughout my experience over the 20 odd years um, has been very much about the reality and fact that no African TV viewer is watching content for purely for entertainment. Um, they watch content to widen their perspective. They watch content, yes, for entertainment, but also there's an educational element to how they view and consume content. So there's a specific signature, which is why then you'll still find that your mass platforms and free-to-air platforms still have relevance in, 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 in this new tech world that we, we live in. You know? So I'm very bullish when it comes to, to research and making sure that we continue, to, um, we continue to connect with what the audience and the African viewer wants. You know, what, what are African youth doing? Where are they consuming the content? Uh, that's something that, that, that keeps us uh, on our toes. And that's something that really impacts the how we do business. Mm. Um, hence, hence the emphasis on partnerships, hence the emphasis on co-pros, hence the emphasis on collaboration. We're going to have to do that across the, bay, the, the base to create a value chain, a very um, sustainable value chain for, for all of us in, in, in business. I mean, that's super interesting because demographically, Africa is a very young continent, right? So to tap into like what, what the youth are looking for is like super essential. That's a market you want to tap into because of just the sheer reality that, you know, Africa has predominantly a youth population. Monday, thank you so much for your time. I uh, really appreciate it. I know it's late. I know you got a meeting to run to that you're late for. So thanks a lot for your time today. <laughs> <laughs> all good, my brother. Always good to catch up uh, and uh, all the best Likewise. with you. All right. Take care. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Cheers, man. And that ends today's episode of Global Vid. Thank you to my guests, Monde Twala and the entire supporting team at Viacom CBS Africa. And as always, thanks to our editor, Nicole Almeida, and our theme song composers, Amber Goodwin and Aaron Ross. See you next time.